Good morning. It's great to see you again today. Well, actually, I don't get to see you. You see me. Um, so before we start, I want to tell you a story of something fantastic. And then an oh no moment. And then something fantastic again. So the fantastic was that yesterday I was talking to somebody I work with on the video and um, I got to see Blake and Gracie and the app was incredible. And I asked them to help pick today's book. And so they picked a book and then last night I'm looking at the book with my son Isaac and Isaac, you know, he has to go to college online right now, is um, 20. And we're looking at the book and we're saying, oh no, this little cat in this book has some massive unconscious bias. And he is making fun of people who come from different countries. And you know what? Geniuses do not make fun of people. And especially do not make fun of people for where they come from. So we decided better not to read that book. So sorry about that. But um, Isaac picked another book. And um, I think it's a really good book and I think you're gonna like it. And it also talks about how people make decisions a little bit with not enough, enough information always. So the book is called Tops and Bottoms. And it's about a lazy bear and about a very, very clever, sorry about the light. Tomorrow, Ants will be up when I do this and we'll get the light right. Um, and a very clever rabbit. And it is adapted, not written, so that's curious, right? It's adapted and illustrated by a woman named Janet Stevens. She's clearly very talented. Alrighty, so here we go. Tops and bottoms. Um, all right, don't laugh. This book's ripped too. We just love our books quite a bit at this house, and so we sort of love them so much we make them not perfect anymore. All right, see the lazy bear? Once upon a time, there lived a very lazy bear who had lots of money and lots of land. I wonder how he had lots of money if he was a very lazy bear. Um, his father, ugh, it's gonna give me the answer. His father had been a hard worker and a smart business bear, and he had given all of his wealth to his son. But all bear wanted to do was sleep. Now, this is a crazy picture. Like, do you see this? It's like above ground, and then it's this very intricate, intricate underground home, and it looks like it's home to a lot and a lot of rabbits. I could spend all day looking at this picture, but that said, let's read. Not far down the road lived a hare. A hare is a rabbit. Although hare was clever, he sometimes got into trouble. He had once owned land too, but now had nothing. He had lost a risky bet with a tortoise. Hmm, the tortoise in the hare. Do you know that story? It sounds very familiar to me. Um, and had sold all of his land to bear to pay off his debt to the tortoise. Um, Hare and his family were in very bad shape. The children are so hungry, Father Hare. We must think of something, Mrs. Hare cried one day. So Hare and Mrs. Hare put their heads together and cooked up a plan. Again, fabulous illustration. The next day, Hare hopped down the road to Bear's house. Bear, of course, was asleep. Hello, bear, wake up, it's your neighbor, Hare. Ah, uh, and I have an idea. Bear opened one eye and grunted. We can be business partners, said Hare. All we need is this field right here in front of your house. I'll do all the hard work of planting and harvesting, and we can split the profits right down the middle. Yes, sir, Bear, we're in this together. 
I'll work and you'll sleep. Huh? Said Bear. So what will it be, Bear? Said Hare. The top half or the bottom half? It's up to you. Tops or bottoms? Uh, let's see. <sighs> said Bear with a yawn. Uh, I'll take the top. Half. Hair. Right. Tops. Hair smiled. It's a done deal, Bear. So Bear went back to sleep, and Hare and his family went to work. Hare planted, Mrs. Hare watered, and everyone weeded. It's nice that the whole family worked on it. Oh my gosh, my camera's going to fall again. Okay, so there we go. Bear. Bear sleeping, people working. Bear slept, and the crops grew. When it was time for harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! You get the tops and I get the bottoms! So there's Bear's tops. I wonder if you can see where this is going. <gasps> and Hare and his family dug up carrots and radishes and beets. Hare plucked off the tops, tossed them into a pile for Bear, and put the bottoms aside for himself. So Hare got all the good stuff, and Bear got pretty much nothing. I think our lazy bear is now an angry bear. Bear stared at his pile. But Hare, all the best parts are in your half. You chose tops, Bear, said Hare. Now, now Hare... You've tricked me. You plant this field again, and this season, I want the bottoms. Hare agreed. It's a done deal, Bear. So Bear went back to sleep, and Hare and his family went to work. They planted, watered, and weeded. Here's the working Hare family, and there's the sleeping bear. Again, beautiful illustrations. That Janet Stevens, very talented. Bear slept as the crops grew, just like before. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! You get the bottoms and I get the tops. Hare and his family gathered up the lettuce and broccoli and celery. Hare pulled off the bottoms for Bear and put the tops in his own pile. So look at Hare's nice pile of vegetables and Bear got a nice pile of roots. <clears throat> Bear looked at the pile and scowled. Can you see the picture if I go like this? Hare! You have treated me again. But Bear, Hare said, you wanted the bottoms. Bear growled. You plant this field again? Hare, you tricked me twice? You come, you owe me one season of both tops and bottoms. You're right, poor old bear, said Hare. It's only fair that you get both tops and bottoms this time. It's a done deal, bear. I wonder what he's going to do. So then the lazy bear sleeps again. You'd think he would have learned and said, hmm, maybe I should pay attention. Maybe I should be more involved in this decision making. But no, he sleeps. So guess what happened? The Hare family... Yet again, Bear went back to sleep and the hare and his family went to work. They planted, watered, weeded, and then watered and weeded some more. Bear slept as the crops grew. When it was time for the harvest, Hare called out, Wake up, Bear! This time, you get the top and the bottoms. Hmm. Why do you think he looks?
look so angry again. There, in front of Bear's house, lay the high field of corn. Hare and his family yanked up every corn stalk. Hare tugged off the roots at the bottom and the tassels at the top and put them in a pile for Bear. Then he carefully collected the ears of corn in the middle, in the middle, and placed them in his own pile. Bear rubbed his eyes and watched. See, Bear, you get the tops and the bottoms. I get the middles, said Hare. Yes, sir, Bear, it's a done deal. I don't think he's very happy. By now, Bear was wide awake. That's it, Hare, he hollered. From now on, I'll plant my own crops and take the tops, bottoms, and middles. Hare and his family scooped up the corn and hopped down the road toward home. <gasps> Finally. Bear never again slept through a season of planting and harvesting. Hare bought back his land with the profit from the crops, and he and Mrs. Hare opened a vegetable stand. And although Hare and Bear learned to live happily as nevers, neighbors, <laughs> do you ever do that? You say the wrong word when you're reading. When Hare and Bear learned to live happily as neighbors, they never became business partners again. The end. I hope you like that story. Um, you know, it's interesting when I think about it. Sometimes we have a little bit of information and so we make a decision and we think this is the best decision I could possibly make. Like I did about the book with the cat. And then I got a little bit more information. I looked a little closer and I realized, oh, there's some other things I should think about or there's more questions I should ask before I make my decision. So anyway, I learned something. I had a great time meeting Blake and Gracie yesterday, although actually I met them before. I just got to see them yesterday. And um, I hope you have a great day. And I don't know, maybe you know, yesterday we saw a totally different style of illustration. Maybe today you could think about doing a different style of illustration. And some of the ways people do that is... Um, you just use something different. Like, so yesterday, if you drew pictures with markers, you could use, you know, the pencil today or a crayon. I love crayons. I don't know why more people don't use them all the time. Do you use them? I think they're fantastic. Or maybe do something else. Cut out a snowflake. I don't know. Have a great day. Bye.